Ms. Perez. I'm the Advocacy and Communications Director with the Texas Civil Rights Project. And we're here to talk about the passage of the anti-voter bill SB9, which unfortunately passed in a party line vote yesterday. This bill would do a lot of harm to a lot of the communities that are engaging in civic engagement work all across the state of Texas, particularly young people, folks in rural communities, folks with disabilities, and elderly folks. This is a dangerous attack on our voting rights, and we want to make sure that everyone can hear from the people and the members who are going to be directly affected by what is happening. So we're just going to have four speakers talk about the impact that the bill, if passed, would have on their communities. And afterwards, we're going to have time for folks to speak with them one-on-one -on -one if needed. And we also have folks here who can talk a little bit more about the law on any sidebar conversations after we close off. So first of all, I want to introduce our great partner for the Texas Civil Rights Project and for all of the work in civic engagement in Texas. Happy to introduce Grace Shemaine, who is the president of the League of Women Voters of Texas, and I'll let her take the podium. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. The League is disappointed. An insidious voter suppression bill, insidious, passed the Senate today. This bill is bad for our democracy. It's bad for voters all across Texas. The League of Women Voters is always working to protect voting rights of all Texas citizens. SB 9 is not in the best interest of Texas voters. Our election laws should empower all voters and respect their rights. We join with other nonpartisan organizations across the state to stop SB 9 in the Texas House of Representatives. SB 9 concentrates on criminal penalties and complicates our already overcomplicated voting process. It makes it more difficult for our 254 counties to conduct elections. Counties have already have a huge challenge in recruiting and training election workers to conduct elections. Increasing election worker responsibilities and adding possible penalties for mistakes is unrealistic and expensive for those counties. Voters already ask us, why is voting so hard in Texas? This bill continues the recent trend of making it more and more difficult to vote. It sends a message to many voters that they are not welcome to exercise their rights as Texas citizens to participate in our democracy. Some examples. This bill creates barriers for voters who are elderly and disabled, making it harder for elderly and those with disabilities to access the polls. This should not be a priority of the Texas legislature. Our democracy should be accessible to all eligible voters. Another example, any voter can make an innocent mistake when filling out a voter registration application. SB 9 threatens those voters with jail time and enormous fines, which are hugely disproportionate to the crime of making an error filling out a form. Both Republican and Democratic voters often find when they show up at the polls for some unknown reason, they're not on the voter registration rolls. SB 9 will scare voters from casting a provisional ballot. Another example, placing a 500 foot bubble, which is just under two football fields, around each polling place to stop anyone from committing the newly created crime of impeding a walkway, parking lot, or roadway is unenforceable and unnecessary. The 100-foot barrier for electioneering is well established already, and existing laws and enforcement can adequately address these concerns. SB 9 also creates a dangerous overreach of law enforcement's involvement in elections. It grants investigators legal immunity in advance for election-related crimes that they may commit. SB 9 allows access to all Texas voters' private information, including Social Security numbers, driver's license numbers, and other personal 
information to the Attorney General's office. The League, other nonpartisan groups, and many county election officials and voters across Texas have lost trust and confidence in this office due to the recent Secretary of State and Attorney General's office actions related to the recent Texas voter purge. The League of Women Voters of Texas has rural members and urban members as far north as Amarillo and as far south as the Rio Grande Valley, west to El Paso and east to Tyler. We volunteer before and during elections, registering voters, volunteering for election protection, getting out the vote, and working at the polls. We are nonpartisan. We never support or oppose parties or candidates. And we thank the organizations who joined with us today and the Texas legislators who understand that there are so many other things the Texas House needs to be working on right now. There are bills about education funding, taxes, and so many other issues facing our state. Our 8,000 members and supporters stand firmly against legislation like SB 9 that limits citizens' voting rights and will continue to educate, and we will continue to educate and organize against this and similar legislation. I'd like to introduce you to Alex Burnell from Move the Move Texas Advocacy Manager. Hi, my name is Alex Burnell and I'm the Advocacy Manager at Move Texas. Move Texas is an organization uh, dedicated to building power in underrepresented youth communities through leadership development, issue advocacy, and civic engagement. We are a nonpartisan nonprofit. We work in six cities San Antonio, Austin, Seguin, Laredo, San Marcos, and Houston. I'm speaking as two people today. As the advocacy manager at Move Texas, an organization that empowers young people across the state. And I'm speaking as a disabled voter. In this way, SB9 is attack on my profession and my life. By criminalizing minor errors made during the voter registration process, SB9 will chill participation in civics. For MOVE, that's a direct affront to our work. Every day we recruit young people into the work of building their own Texas and building their own power. By registering their friends, making up bigger voting blocks at the polls, and fighting for and against policies we know we have a stake in. SB 9 raises the liabilities in the work that we do so much. We expect it to deter so many young people from this work because of the greater risks. Not only does this build disenfranchise in the long run, but it also attacks the very theory at the heart of organizations like ours and many of the organizations that are here with us today. New rules about distance from polling locations in the name of decreasing impediments will jeopardize our party at the poll programs, which actually brings people to the polls, doesn't deter them. We fight to modernize voting, making it easier and less onerous. SB9 criminalizes in the face of obvious solutions, like online and automatic voter registration, because it's not a legislation that's actually about solutions or integrity. That's its political Trojan horse. It's about politics, implicit disenfranchisement, explicit disenfranchisement, as if they expected the disabled, the elderly, and the non-English speaking voters not to notice. Well, as you can tell today, we've noticed. When the Senate Act passed SB 9, as a disabled voter, it's personal. As my body changes with age, and I feel the lethar lethargy of my movements become more pronounced, I'll need help expressing my vote. SB9 takes the very best in people, the desire to help, and reframes it as a breeding ground for fraud and corruption that demands in their minds a whole new surveillance bureaucracy in our election process. I've got crutches. I know crutches. SB9 is a crutch to stay in power by keeping voters out. Move with everyone here stands together to fight SB9. I'd like to thank you very much and after me I'll introduce Zoraima Palaez, Advocacy and Outreach Organizer with the Texas Freedom Network.
nombre es Raima Pelais y estoy aquí en representación de Texas Freedom Network, una organización de movimiento popular lucha por la igualdad y justicia social en el estado de Texas. Con orgullo, soy la hija de inmigrantes de México y Colombia. Mis padres se hicieron ciudadanos de este país con Colombia, pero no fue así que me involucré en la revolución política con Texas Freedom Network, que mi mamá votó por la primera vez. Como persona autorizada por el condado de, uh, de Texas para registrar votantes, he registrado a cientos personas para votar, mi madre incluida. Recuerdo haberla registrado por votar en el 2016. Aunque estaba registrada, mi mamá no votó porque no estaba segura dónde ir o cómo votar cuando llegó. Así que en el 2018 yo fui con ella. Y cuando votó por primera vez estaba tan orgullosa y yo también de ella. Pero mi mami no estaba sola. Miles de otras personas que históricamente habían sido privadas de este derecho votaron el año pasado. Y por eso existe la SB9. My name is Soraima Pelais, and I'm the Outreach and Advocacy Manager for Texas Freedom Network. I'm also the proud daughter of Mexican and Colombian immigrants. My parents became naturalized citizens when I was a young girl, but it wasn't until I became involved in political advocacy as a student organizer with Texas Rising, a project of the Texas Freedom Network, that my mother exercised her constitutional right to vote. As a VDR, a voter deputy registrar of Travis County, I had the pleasure of registering hundreds of people to vote, including my mom. And in 2018, I registered and joined her at the polls to cast her ballot for the first time since she became a U.S. citizen. I was so proud. As it turns out, she was not alone. Thousands of traditionally disenfranchised voters, such as naturalized citizens and young people, joined her in casting a ballot last year. And that's why we're here today, and why SB9 exists. Through TFN Texas Rising Program, our student leaders registered over 30,000 young Texans to vote in the last election. Many of them were first-time voters and required assistance, like my mom. It's a process that can be intimidating and outright uninviting at times. And under SB9, people like me and our student leaders have to submit paperwork and go through an unnecessary bureaucratic process in order to help our friends and fellow citizens cast a ballot. Put simply, the intention of SB9 is to intimidate people who may be new to voting, as well as those who wish to help them. The 2018 election was a wake-up call to those in power. Young people and people of color are no longer the future of this state. We are the now of this state, and we demand that our representatives oppose SB9 and any other attempts to suppress the vote in Texas. I'm going to pass it off to my friend, Bob Kafka, who's the organizer of Rabat Texas. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Bob Kafka. I'm an organizer with RevUp Texas. RevUp stands for Register, Educate, Vote, Use Your Power. The disability vote is not usually seen as something that politicians reach out to. What RevUp was created was to build the influence of the disability community in electoral politics. Senate Bill 9 sends a chilling message to the millions of disabled people in the state of Texas that they're not welcome to the polls. Poll after poll has shown one of the biggest problems for people with disabilities is accessibility not only when they get to the polls but even registering, getting transportation to or assistance in. Senate Bill 9 in many cases would criminalize people that assist a person with disabilities not only marking the ballot but potentially even driving a person with a disability. An Uber driver could possibly be making a criminal act to assist somebody uh, depending on how the Secretary of State would write the rules. Everything about and Senate Bill 9 is discriminatory to low-income people regardless whether they have a disability or not. 
I'm 73 years old, so I don't know if you would call me a person with a disability, a senior, uh, but I do know that unless this coalition is listened to by the House of Representatives, the emerging disability vote in Texas will be silent. I cannot tell you, though RevUp is new in the area of electoral politics, the issues that they're discussing inside affect our very lives. And the way that that will be silenced is if the House passes SB9. So RevUp Texas, which has many partners with disability groups all over the state, are adamantly against this bill and implores the Elections Committee and the House, even Speaker Bonin, to come out against SB9. Thank you very much. I'll turn it back to Zenin. Thank you, everyone. That concludes our comments for today. Does anybody have any questions that we can answer for any of the speakers or anything about SB9? Cool. If not, okay, we're going to conclude and folks are going to be available for any speaking opportunities on the side. Um, just feel free to coordinate with me or with the person. And thank you to everyone who attended. Like we said, this is just the beginning of our efforts to stop the House of Representatives from moving forward with this bill. And thank you to all of the speakers and everyone here who are standing up for democracy. Uh, thank you, and we'll close off with that.